It's a while since I've taken a lamp to bit, so I thought, what better lamp to take apart than this very topical one, this fake UVC lamp. So these listings and the seller of this one, after I'd bought it, the listing got taken down. I was wondering if I was actually going to receive it. Uh, their whole shop is gone now. It's no longer a, a seller, a registered seller, that particular one. So here's a different one. It's very easy to find them because they're all over eBay. A common style lamp described as 60 watt. It's not. UV. It's not. Germicidal. It's not. Lamp E26, E27 UVC. It's not. LED. Yep. Bulb. Home. Ozone. Nope. Disinfection. Nope. Light bulb. So um, let's take a look at it. £10.54. It's an okay price for a lovely blue light bulb, but you're not going to be sterilising things with this because as far as I can see, this is just a blue light bulb effectively. So the idea is, well, let's show you it lit. That's a good thing. I'll show you it lit. And we'll test it, and then I'll tell you why it's the colour it is. So here's the hobby tester. Let's screw this into this fetching germicidal pink lamp holder. It's not really germicidal, but then now there's the lamp that's being screwed into it. And I won't touch this lamp while I screw it in uh, and power it up because uh, the solder connections on it are live at mains voltage. Just thought I'd mention that in case you've got one of these. So let's bring in a meter. And a little test module that detects ultraviolet light. It's sensitive to visible light to a degree, but it's mainly sensitive to ultraviolet. So that's uh, showing a sort of low level signal, and I'd expect that to go up with this lamp over that sensor. It would go up to over a volt. At the moment, it's just 12 millivolts, 12 thousandths of a volt. I'm going to plug this in. Oh, marvel at that bright blue light. Um, it's showing 29 watts for a 60 watt lamp, so it's not 60 watts. I put it roughly the same height as the other one. This one showed um, 1 volt at around about this height. This one's showing uh, 57 millivolts, that's 57 thousandths of a volt. It's nowhere near. And likewise with the test that I did, if you put glass in between it, with that one it drops, instantly drops way down because the glass blocks UVC. If I put this one in it's not going to drop that far, it's only going to drop a few millivolts because this thing is not putting out UVC. It's putting out, as far as I can see, just blue light. Let's get this stuff out the way and I shall explain why it's putting out blue light. I could show you why it's putting out blue light. I could uh, just clear out the room momentarily and show you why it's putting out blue light before I take this apart. And to show you that, I shall plug this in and then I'll just clear off out the room and let you see it warm up for a while. I won't leave it on too long because, see that lovely blue? I'm going to take the exposure off. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, isn't that lovely? That is a really nice colour, but yeah. You've seen it's blue, that's all you need to know. It's that lovely shade of blue. The light is coming back, watch your eyes. And I'll just lock that off. So this is a traditional mercury lamp and that's what this is trying to emulate. This one has mercury vapour inside and the visible blue is not the ultraviolet. The visible blue is the fact that it puts out several peaks in, throughout the visible and ultraviolet spectrum. And in the visible spectrum, the peaks are in green and violet and that gives that lovely turquoisey blue. Not good to look at if you buy one of these lamps. Don't expose it to your skin. Don't look at your eye. Don't look at it with bare eyes, you're better not in the same room because it will cause damage. It will cause extreme eye problems and skin problems, burns. This one, less so. This one's just more of a shock risk. But that's the reason they've chosen this colour. And the colour of the LEDs is what's called ice blue. It's a standard blue or ultraviolet chip and then it's got a little layer of phosphor on the top that creates that. It's a nice enough colour. It's not ultraviolet, but it's a nice enough colour. Um, other tests I've done, real UVC LEDs have a very specialist construction. They're made of brass with little quartz or sapphire windows on them. And they have quite a high voltage. Because of the construction, it's about 6 to 8 volts across them. These ones are just 3 volts. I've measured that. Let's do a little test just to show you that the power supply inside is not very well isolated. Let's put it to continuity and show you that the only thing between you and the mains is, if I hold that on the live at the back here, and I touch that to there, 
and get 0.6 volt roughly, that means that it's a buck regulator and that if you were to actually touch the solder joints in this while you were screwing it in, you could get a significant electric shock because there's not much between you and the mains. That's important to know. Let's open it up. Usually it's actually rattling. Uh, usually these things just have these bases. They're very common bases. They're used for other lamps too. Hopefully it's not glued together. It's not glued. It's different. There's a thing that was rattling. Oh, and there's where it's off. It's off one of these little inductors. Is it just an inductor? I should be careful here because this does have big fat capacitors. Uh, it is just inductors. You've got... I'll zoom down a bit in this. You've got uh, the inductor here. And then it's got one, two, three, four pads, but they're common in pairs. So that is just purely it's an inductor. That's why it was passing main straight through. There's two complete power supplies. It's driving them as two sets of lights. It's got the ingoing bridge rectifier. It's got the big, fat, juicy electrolytic capacitors, which are bad news if they hold a charge. Do they still hold a charge? I'll stick my finger across them. One day I'm going to get bitten. Uh, right, okay, they don't hold a charge. The capacitors, incidentally, are right next to those hot chokes and just above the little switch mode chip underneath that uh, drives the lamp. Can't really hinge them up because uh, they've got a very cramped space, but I will try and read the number off that chip. I have no hope of this. No, it's really obscured from sight by that uh, capacitor being in front of it. WS9002S7P by the look of it. Okay, it'll be a generic buck regulator. Let's take this to bits. Let's take it further apart. I'll zoom back out a bit because we're kind of close at the moment. So there's a, a it's a mixed thing, you know, that the fact they're selling these. They're not germicidal. If people are buying these, and the worst case is that someone makes a, a mask sterilizer for a local hospital with these, that would just be terrible because it would not be sterilizing anything. But uh, on the plus side, if people buy these for use at their home, they're going to get all the theater. Oh, look at that. They're going to get all the theater of a UV light, but uh, with the blue light and lighting the whole room and they get the warnings and, you know, the listings say uh, they've got, basically they've copied the information you get from this, including some of them saying that you'll get ozone, which you don't, and a burning smell, which you don't. That's, this does create that effect. They give you all the warnings about not going near the, the lamps, um, in, near the rooms and exposing yourself. But in reality, it's just theatre, it's drama, just to uh, give the illusion that it is a real UVC lamp. So these things are just sliding out. That's more or less it. So what do we have here? We've got the positive connections. The con positive is going to one end and then it's looping out. It's going to there, to there, to there. To there, the next one, then the next one, and then it's looping back to the power supply. The other one I know from that, the positive is going to this, but then it'll loop round, and the final one it's going to loop onto the end because these strips all have 15 LEDs. They're wired as uh, three series circuits of um, five LEDs in parallel, giving round about. Um, giving around about um, nine volts across each section, but that is reference to the mains. It's kind of a, it's, they're not actually matched in quantity of LEDs, the power, each power supply, they'll just be regulating to a specific current, each uh, power supply is driving a different section, and one of them has one more set than the other, because there's a total of 13. But that means that typically, if there's going to be six and seven, then the voltage across the LEDs would be seven volts, times the 9 volts. The maximum voltage across the LEDs is going to be about 63 volts in there. The end plate, is there any heat shrink? Uh, not heat shrink, heat sink compound on it. Let's take this off. This is where the whole thing disintegrates into bits. So it's a bit devious. Uh, as I was saying, one of the good things is that people will get the drama of having their, what they think is a germicidal lamp, but it won't risk injuring them because uh, it can't injure them because it's not actually UVC. 
However, the downside of that is they may get over familiar with them. They say may say, oh, I had one of those and you could just go in the room and it was absolutely fine. But then they end up getting a real UVC lamp and they go into the room and hang about and then they're going to really suffer because, uh, as I say, it causes uh, damage to your eyes. It, it heals up after a while, but you wake in the middle of the night and it feels like there's sand in your eyes. It's, it's what welders get when they get exposed to arc flash. Uh, but there we go. Uh, not much else to say about this. It's a fairly generic two buck regulators dividing the load into two sections of the lamp and then just loads of these sort of 9 volt modules. And this one's 9 volt as well. Just wired in series to make up the required sort of total power. And that's your fake lamp. <clears throat> so, as I say, if you want a real germicidal lamp, the only one that I recommend is the glass type like this because these ones with the glass tube and the mercury vapour are the most efficient way of generating that. I believe they put out 95% of their output in UVC. You get two versions. You get one that produces ozone and one that has a filter in the glass that uh, blocks the, the narrower wavelength that breaks oxygen apart because this has two peaks in the UVC. C spectrum. You're also, before MD says it, not supposed to really handle them. It leaves fingerprints on them. It can uh, affect its output. And you can clean them with a uh, alcohol swab, you know, a cloth just to wipe them clean if they do, uh, if you do handle them. And this one, when you put it on, this one does create tons of ozone. It's interesting to note that the resin between the tubes to support them is it yellowed very quickly. It was clear when I got this tube, so it's, uh, it's aged quite quickly. But there's no ozone smell off this. You wouldn't expect that off LEDs. And the real LEDs are typically between two and five pounds each. So you're not going to get, you're not going to get 195 of them for uh, for 11 or 12 pounds. And you're also uh, not going to get them in this package because it would degrade them very quickly. Is that a hard resin? Yeah, it's a fairly hard resin in that. And uh, basically it's just those ice blue LEDs. Nice enough colour though. Um, certainly it's it's a nice novelty lamp, but there's always that doubt now that they've been passing it off as ultraviolet that you wouldn't really want to risk, you know, staying in a room with it just in case you over-familiarised yourself with that and ended up doing it with a, a real tube. But there we go. That's what's inside a fake UVC corn cob lamp. <laughs>